for our World Series. We'll see. We'll okay. see. We'll see how it goes. Oh, we can thank YouTube and their stupid commercials. All righty, guys. Uh, welcome, welcome, one and all. We're going to get started here in a few minutes. We'll give everybody a few minutes to check in with us before we get officially started. So, uh, guys, how you guys doing tonight? We're going to be talking May baseball, our review. So, uh, hopefully, you guys have been watching and following along what's been going on. I'm sure you all have some opinions. I have they opinions. Might be, they might be wrong, but you might Usually. have some opinions. <laughs> you know what they say about opinions? Everybody's got one. Yeah, that's I'd it. like to apologize to Toronto for counting out the, the Raptors the last time we got together, thinking that they were done as they play in game three of the NBA Finals. Hmm. Very good pronosticator there, Ron. Very good. And, and, uh, I, was, I was most likely not to be Nostradamus in high school, okay? All right, so we'll actually not get started, but we're going to talk. We're going to give everybody a chance here now. We're not going to talk baseball. We're going to talk hockey. Okay? Uh, St. Louis uh, Blues or the Boston Don't Bruins? Blues. <laughs> Blues or the Bruins? Blue, Tied well, up two games apiece, so it's come down to the best of three. What do you guys think? Can I abstain? Uh, you can. Go Blues. Yeah, I want St. Louis to win, but I think Boston will actually win, but I prefer to see St. Louis win. Yeah, I, I agree. I think uh, I think Boston's a better, deeper team. Uh, you, but you never know in the in NHL playoffs. Uh, you know, you get a hot goalie, and they can carry you through a series. So St. Hopefully- Louis took some heat, too, for the national anthem. They had, like, a national car rental flag. Behind the uh, when the guy was singing the national anthem, there was some buzz about that on one of the news. Wow, channels I did not there. see that. No, I didn't yeah. see that. What the deal was, I mean, they were sponsoring the thing, so I guess I don't see any reason why. You know what would be offensive about it? it didn't cover the American flag or anything, so mm. I don't know. It's advertising. I'm not a hockey fan, so I really, you know, I'm out of my element in hockey. The two of the next, th- you know, two of the three are in Boston. Boston's already won one in St. Louis, so you know you would think that Boston would. Well, favored, but, Lewis, well, I mean, St. St. Louis, Louis has already won one in Boston. Boston. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, <laughs> let's it'd be nice if it went seven. I, I think it's got about a 50 50 chance to go. In I seven. would think so. You and know, we need but, St. Louis to pay Boston back because the last couple of St. Louis Boston World Series have gone the wrong way. So, now if St. Louis can take care of Boston, <laughs> amen, to, amen to that. <laughs> Yeah, we don't Good need night. Boston winning anything ever again. I mean, come on, seriously. Hey, I love the billboards in, in Boston for saying it had been 104 days since the last championship. You know, how, how can we survive? Well, it uh, used to be 104 years, right? Yeah. No, the Celtics won a bunch. Oh, God. How about the Red Sox? <laughs> no, it was only 86. 86 years. Okay. 86 years. Uh-huh. Not like the Cubs, you know. I mean, that was 108. Yeah. Who the has the longest Celtics, streak now? You know, Cleveland the Celtics. Used to, Cleveland Celtics used to be. Yeah, Celtics used to be a one-team town in Boston at one point. Celtics were the even when they won, they didn't draw. But it's yeah. not a basketball town. That, you know, yeah, but the, the Bruins never won one. At least it took them a while to win their first one. Boston, we knew about them, and New England won their first one. So. All of a sudden, all their four sports. Now, all of a sudden, okay, let's take turns winning one every year. I remember turning to my wife at the end of that Super Bowl, and I said to her, "Now, my wife knows two poops about sports. Okay, you know she's not a sports fan." I remember turning to her at the end of that Super Bowl, and I said, "I can't believe it's the Patsies are the team that broke through of all those of all those Boston teams. It's the Patsies we're sitting here watching win a championship." No, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, St. Louis victory last night was the first standing the, up home and, win ever, ever for them. Yeah. And they're winning game two is their first win ever in the cup. They were swept by month by the superior Montreal Canadiens and oh yeah, the Bruins. Yeah. What is this about what is this about Boston teams wanting to beat St. Louis teams for a championship? 
Yeah. What, what the is Rams? That? The Rams for the Patriots. I mean, <laughs> you just mentioned they just mentioned that Ron. They beat the Rams, St. Oh, Louis. Yeah. Right. What well, they were in St. Louis at the time. Hey, you know, it's whatever geography is, and St. Louis was always cons- their first NBA championship was over the St. Louis Hawks. No, oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're killing me, guys. You're killing me. You, know, you grew up in Buffalo, you know, so don't give me that. I mean, I... <sighs> well, even worse, Bill. Even worse, a Bills fan. Yeah. Done with that. Done with hey, that. It was nice to see. Uh, it was nice to see Dave Gardner pull out the old dice. It was, wasn't it? Yeah, that looked really cool. He's good. Oh, I'm, I'm, surprised you, I'm surprised he knew how to read the dice. <laughs> 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 and, he, he had a real good time with that, and uh, he had a Jackson pretty cool team, setup too. He did. He really the that app on the phone for the scoreboard I thought was really cool, and I guess he's got goal horns for everybody. Yeah. So uh, expect to see. I'm not some a hockey of fan, but I enjoy watching it. And I'm I mentioned I mentioned him somewhere, probably on the Facebook group. It was like, well, when somebody else ran this game, I was less than appealed by this game. Because the game was like ten to nine, it's like, well, this looks like a a horrible game. His game today was like when I turned it off, it was like two to one. It's like, wow, it's yeah. actually it, it, realistic hockey. Mike, it's a really good quick play solitaire hockey game. Um, but it played, but it played a lot better than the last person I saw it play. Plays it, to be honest. fast too. You can get a game done in fifteen minutes, and it's fifteen. Cheap. Wow. Yeah, fifteen. Once he gets it figured out, it'll be fifteen minutes. And what is it? Was it P- all things PDF? It's all things PDF. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like roster card baseball, I guess, with with all the teams on one page. It, yeah, it's it. Um, all the players on one team. Yeah. All the players okay, on yeah, one team. You. But you get like three teams on one page to cut. So yeah. real, really, it's if you get like a seventy season, it's six pages. Yeah. Of course, everybody makes the playoffs, but <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope the let's hope St. Louis can do it. I mean, you know, I'm a St. Louis guy, anyways, but I always like the underdog team hasn't won. They need to do it. Uh, you know, I it would really be a big um, boost to them and uh, p- really put them on the map. You it, know, everyone... it makes for a good story. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we should get started. We're giving everybody a little bit of time. So we got to Jeremy Smith. We got Dale in the house. We got Tribe Fan 879. We got Larry Harris. We got Bleacher Bums Gaming. Uh, let's see. Anybody else I missed out there? No, I think are, that's are, about are everything. We allowed to, are, are we allowed to cuss on the ID channel or, or, or is it parental? It's uh, we're, we're family friendly. As best we can here until you guys piss me off, then I then I get to. You're you guys the only dirty words no we reason. can say is Bob Stanley. Oh. Bob Stanley's the only dirty word we could say. <laughs> That's it. All right, we're gonna be talking May baseball. May baseball here. We're gonna talk about our oh, what we think of May baseball. So uh, let's start with Ron. Ron, yes, how are you doing tonight? Retro You're Sports fine. Network. You just had a live stream. Talk about your live stream and introduce it to everyone because it's important for us here as our community to let everyone know what's going on in your channel. Well, we got the last month of the 1982 baseball season coming up. We're in the last week of August. And we got some good races in the American League and the National League. Not St. Louis this year. Um, and tonight, thanks to to Dave Demos, the smart aleck that he is, we did our first Patreon game where you pay me some $10 and I pay play any game that you want. And Dave, because he's a kind, gentle soul who knows just how much trouble I still have with that 1986 Boston Red Sox team, bought the 1987 opening day matchup between the Red Sox and the Brewers, and I had to run out Bob Stanley. And the Red Sox got absolutely smashed. But uh, but I do appreciate it. And uh, if you want a game run, it's it's patreon.com backslash or slash retro sports network. And so that was fun. I do I was happy to do it despite the uh, gritted teeth. <laughs> and Dave, uh, you uh, 
had a good time uh, introducing Ron to uh, the the joys of running games that other people want you to run. Yes. So talk Absolutely. about that. And the joys of Bob Stanley. And the joys of Bob Stanley. Did you choose it specifically because of that situation? or was Yes, because just- in several chats, he's brought up Bob Stanley before, and I noticed, and he made a comment about the 87 where Bob Stanley had to start opening day, and I kind of just kind of as a joke said, I ought, to, I ought to get you to play that on a Patreon game. And I thought about it in the fight said, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and help support his channel. And I said, I'll go ahead and do it. And he was kind enough to accept the challenge of the 87. He said he'll play anything on action, you know, any season, any game, basketball, football, baseball, hockey. You know, if it, you know, if it wasn't 14, 15 years old, when that was actually going on, it wouldn't be so bad. I mean, if yeah. you asked me to do some Yankee nine nothing comeback against the Red Sox now, I probably wouldn't care. But you know, it, it, fourteen, fifteen years old, it just meant everything. Or the Pedro Who's Your Daddy game. So yeah, you know, it's just one of those things that's like, oh, why, why? But yeah, I mean, it's, it, I mean, he's right. You know, he made the good point. If I'll play that, I'll pretty much play what you want. But uh, yeah, I mean, that was probably your. After you play that, everything else is downhill after that. So. I'm sure people will, you know, find some Celtics Pistons games or yeah. Bruins Canadians or no, trust me. But that's pretty much the, that was. Up until Francona got fired, that pretty much was the lowest of the lowest a Red Sox fan was opening to 87. Yeah, well, I still want to rent out the top of your forehead and put my uh, logo on the – Yeah, there name you go. Your, name your price there, buddy boy. Billboard. <laughs> Bill, billboard Ronnie. Sports time machine, man. What's going on with you? You got some uh, comeback. They're not I out do. yet. Talk about it. Let us know I what's see. going on. All right. So one of the new things I'm doing right now is what's called uh, 14 back. The the story of the 1978 New York Yankees as told by Stratomatic Baseball. So what, what I'm doing is I'm taking the exact records of, of that point in history when they fell 14 back and then basically going through Stratomatic PC and basically starting from that date forward and then autoing everyone else's games and playing my games up to that point. And Stratomatic PC will allow you to do that, will allow you to start anywhere on the schedule and to play forward. So that was great. I was able to do that. I'm able to do as played rosters, as played lineups, and don't make any changes that way and see if I can compile the comeback. So right now I'm playing some of the games offline and playing some of the games online. So it's uh, so it'll be kind of cool, and I'll go ahead and you know give results and scores of the, of the Boston games where I'll mention it. What I'm trying to do differently, and, and it doesn't work as sometimes as well. I'm trying to call the game like a broadcast and not a stratomatic broadcast, just because I think there's a lot of people that, you know do the the stratomatic type you know broadcast call or something like that. It's hard because I end up going well five seven this. I'm trying to I'm trying not to do that. If I don't catch myself doing that, you know, maybe I'll donate a buck to, to Ron. But yeah, I'm trying to, you know, call it like if if I was part of the the Yankee family or the Yankee, you know, Channel Eleven broadcasts, and you know, trying to do an actual baseball game out of it. Yeah, so since, since that's the since, since that's the one big since that's like the one season, you know, I I remember as a kid. So I I'm, I'm going to see if I can kind of duplicate what happened since. Yeah, I know it's very hard when you got Stratomatic and and you roll that four six. The first thing out of your mouth is four six four six instead of just saying, "Oh, it's a ground ball hit to so and so." You know, and they pick it up and throw it to first and all that. It's so hard to not get that that number, you know, out of out, uh, you know in the broadcast. It's so hard. Mm-hmm. You also nice. just finished another project. I won't spoil it for anyone that hasn't watched it. Talk about that as well. Yeah, I did. I well, it was such a quick dang. I was supposed to be a, hopefully a seven game broadcast, but it was a, it was, it was a. I just finished a replay of the two thousand two World Series since I had the cards and dice, but I actually converted it to cards and dice slash PC, which ended up working better for me between the Angels and the uh, the Angels two thousand two. Since I lost, I forgot the the Angels and the Giants back in two thousand two. So it was the Barry Barry Bonds versus the uh, the Rally Monkey. Yeah, 
it was an awesome series. I enjoyed it a lot. It and I appreciate uh, I appreciate you bringing all that stuff, and I uh, look forward to some more of, of everyone's stuff on their channels. So let's talk. Let's talk May baseball now. Specifically, you know, we're in the second month of the season. First question I asked you at the end of April was what you thought of the month, grade wide, grade wise, A, B, C, D, or F. And everyone had an opinion. So uh, let's start with Ron. What did you think of May baseball season? A, B, C, D, or F? I'm going to go with a B minus. I'm concerned. You know, I think as a casual fan, I think I'd be concerned about the overwhelming amount of strikeouts and home runs. But we got some good races developing. There isn't anything outside of the National League West that really, and the American League Central, that's really out of hand. Um, you know, all the power to, to Los Angeles and the, and the Minnesota Twins for doing what they're doing. But, um, but you know, it's just just too much extremism, I guess, would be the short answer. All right. Hey, and uh, Sports Time Machine, what, what would your uh, original grade be? I'm probably between – I would probably – I would say a B just because my uh, – personally, what I like about the season so far – and basically, if you know, if you're a fan of a team that hasn't had their starters all year, and they found a way through in youth and enthusiasm, they're playing their butts off. Yeah, it's been a been a kind of A plus season. But I, but but if you asked me, if you asked us back in April who was going to win the Central, we'd have said Cleveland running away with it, and everyone else falling. Well, that's been kind of well. Some of us did pick Minnesota, but not by double digits the way they've been doing this right now so and yes and and, I, and and to me i thought the dodgers did have some injuries and everything else and i didn't think they'd be running away from the west either and hiding so so i'll probably i would say for like like it would be i've always been a home run home run type guy with some pitching so the home runs doesn't i kind of like them when i see them all right not that i want to see them not that i want to see them on my tv right now crap but you know it's it's been all right. <laughs> Thank, all right, you, Ma Thank you, Masahiro Tanaka. <laughs> baseball demos. What did you? What was your? What would you give it? Uh, the month of May. I would give it a C. I think it's just, it's just kind of there. Um, there's some feel good stories like the Twins and Hinjin Rue from the Dodgers is a feel good story, but in my opinion, both West divisions are over. And the AL Central's over. So you got the two NL divisions are really tight. And you got a three team race in the AL East. So, I mean, there's not, there could be more pennant races, but there aren't. So I got a couple of feel good stories, but and I think Tabby just got behind me. Um, you got a couple of feel good stories, but uh, overall, it's just, it's, I mean, I'll tune into games, but it's not really grabbing my interest right now as a whole. Yeah, interesting that you say that because, um, you know, we asked this question last time and you guys had a, a lot of kind of mediocre scores, C's and B's last time, and I gave it an A because of all the excitement and everything, all these teams that are in it. Now for the month of May, I'm giving it almost a D because the teams that were in it to begin with have fallen on hard times. Kansas City's now no yeah. longer <laughs> no longer – you know, around we talked about Seattle. They were they were might be a player this year. They've fallen down, down, down. Uh, so all these teams that were interesting to watch in the in the first month have lost a lot, and now all of a sudden they're out of it again. And so all of a sudden it's like, do I want to watch them anymore if they're going to be out of it already? You know, ten games back or twelve games back. So I'm going to give month of May D, just because it doesn't seem like. There's that that interest anymore that there was in April with all those teams that started off really good, and you know a lot of the teams that were uh, uh, you know the powerhouse teams that didn't have a very good start made it really interesting. But now it's kind of flip flop. The teams that are really good are starting to show they're really good, and the teams that are really bad are starting to show. Well, I guess we should say the teams that are mediocre are starting to fall, fall back, fall back, fall back. So. I'm going to give it a D, uh, but hopefully uh, some of these teams can uh, catch a little bit of fire here 
in June and try to make a, make a, make a run out of things. So let's go like ahead. And Dennis Green said that a lot of these teams are who they thought we were. They are who they, we thought they were. Yeah, that's <laughs> about right. <laughs> All right, so we've always done the American League. We're going to start in the National League. We're going to start in the National League. Let's talk about the National League East. Of course, we're talking about Philadelphia, Atlanta, the Mets, Washington, and Miami. Now, we've been hammering. Oh, April was not a good month for the Nationals. They got hammered in our preview show. I think everybody had counted them out. They were trash. Uh, get rid of the manager. Get out of the manager. And lo and behold, look at now. End of May, they're only six back. What do we? What are we supposed to take out of this, David? From the National League East, is it going to be a tight race all the way through? The division, or? That the whole division is terrible, and that's the only reason the Nationals are even close because they're awful too. Is that, I think the win, I think that I think eighty-five wins wins that division easily. Is it because they're all so good that they have to beat up one another? No, no. The only ones they beat are themselves. Philly just went out to LA and got swept, so you could, the, the, definitely the power is out west there. So it's the same with the NL Central; they kind of beat up on each other too. But but the East is, is out got for, so much weakness in the East; it's just pathetic. And McCutcheon right. is out for the year. Oh, by the way, oh, did oh, they? He is. I, oh, I didn't hear that he was out for the year. Yeah, torn ACL. All right. Uh, Mike, what do you got to say about the American League East? Let's hear your thoughts and opinions. The, you the mean National League East? Uh, na- National League, yes. Uh, my bad. Uh, it's like it's like the Game of Thrones. Uh, it's going to be who can who who can survive the last big fight, and who's going to be the last one standing in the end, I guess. And we're looking at you know if the Cardinals were in the East like they should be, they they'd probably win this division. But unfortunately, now you got a bunch of teams that maybe are one trade away. These these are going to be the type of teams where we do a show at the end of July or beginning of August. We'll be like, who who took advantage of the trade deadline the smartest, and who can win? Who will make the move that will win it? You know, right now we're probably going to see Keiko Keiko Shaven, and if Kimbrel maybe lands somewhere back in the NL East, maybe his. Uh, his former team, like the Braves or the Phillies, maybe he'll make the the difference in pushing a team over, or is it just going to be horrible the rest of the way? So, I think it's I think it's it's going to be a dog fight, and it may take that one it may take that one move. It may take a mad bum coming out of San Francisco to be the king of the throne at the end of the year. Who knows? All right, and retro, uh, good. Mickey Calloway has been on the gallows for the Mets for the last month. <laughs> and the Mets are what, five games out of first. That tells you everything you need to know about the National League East in a, in a pretty bow as long as you like tutti fruity colors. Um, look, it's all smoke and mirrors right now. The McCutcheon injury is a big deal. Uh, at, uh, Atlanta could be conceivably sign Koiko or uh, Kimbrell. Uh, the Nats are playing a little bit better, but I think that's smoke and mirrors. I'm looking at the odds on for the playoffs, and right now the entire division has a 14% chance of winning the pennant. So if you took all five teams and added their chances together, it adds to about 14%, which is less than the Milwaukee Brewers by themselves. It's just a terrible division, right? It was supposed to be a great division, and it's all kind of collapsed upon itself. You know, I, any of those four teams could still win it because Miami certainly isn't, but uh, it's it's Phyllis Diller ugly. Okay. Well, we talked at the end of May, and I gave everyone a reprieve on their, uh, their uh, World Series preview. And if you all remember, I ended up changing mine to – Philadelphia, because in May or in April, they were on a roll and they were putting it all together. Now, they had, they did definitely hit some harder times in May. I still think they're a, a better ball club than you all are giving them credit for at this point. It's how funny that when we have these conversations, it's, you know, what, what have you done for me lately? And we talk about those things. Uh, 
and I'm I'm more of a big picture guy. I look at the big picture. I still think Philadelphia is going to be a uh, a force to be reckoned with. I said it was going to come down to the Dodgers and Philadelphia, and I still believe that. So we're going to play. Uh, but we're, I'm going to interrupt you here for a second because now Baseball Reference has projections for everybody. They have the Phillies projected to finish the year 49 and 52. The rest of the way. And what okay. would that make for overall record? That would make them 82 and 79. They would finish five games behind the Braves. Oh, they're projecting the Braves. They're projecting Atlanta to win the division. With 87 wins. With 87 wins. 87 and 75. I take the I take the under on those if I was a bet man in Vegas. Yeah, I, I, I'm especially now with McCutcheon gone. I'm just not seeing Philadelphia. I mean, Harper's had a terrible year. He's had a terrible year. Is he going to continue having a terrible year? Yes, I watched him for two and a half so. years in Washington. I do he's not a, think he's going to continue having. He's had a bad May. He didn't have that bad in April. I watched him and, play the Cardinals, and he he had two home runs and. Eight RBIs and two doubles, and it seemed like, of course, he started hitting against the Cardinals. Of course, but and, and the Phillies have a is the most overrated is. player in baseball. Yeah. It could be. I, I won't argue that point. What I will argue is, I think overall, you don't take a player one season, two seasons, three seasons, but you take his six or seven seasons, and they've averaged. And then the next season, he's not going to be like he was before. I just don't – I don't see that happening in the long run. So if he had a bad April and a bad May to make up for, and he's going to have a good June and July and August. And uh -huh. that's why I think Philadelphia – we got this recorded. We got uh -huh. this recorded. I'm just yes, warning you because I'm going to be pulling this out come September. When he's got 250 million. strikeouts? Yeah, please do. I still think I still think Philadelphia is going to be a force to be reckoned with in the American League East. Unfortunately, no. well, okay. in the American League East, how about the I'm National, League. National League East? Mm. I forgot we were doing National League. In the National <laughs> League East, there's still going to be there's still going to be a, uh, a force to be reckoned with. So, if it's not Philadelphia, since you guys are arguing with me about it, who's it going to be? In Do we have East, to pick somebody about, out of that about the National League? I'm talking about the National League. Somebody's going to win the division. You guys oh, are Phil, Philadelphia will win by default. Okay, and they're and they will not win a playoff series from, no, from what you're saying. One and done. They're going to play. They're going to play the. They're going to play the winner of the National League Central, and they they're not going to get out of it. I would, because I would, probably the best. I would agree with that. I I just don't. Atlanta. The wild card team's going to play the Dodgers, so. All right, so let's talk about the National League Central Division, which you all are high on. All high on. Mm -hmm. uh, the team that's winning the team that's winning the National League Central Division is one game more than Philadelphia, and that's Milwaukee. So you're going to tell me Milwaukee is a force to be reckoned with? Yes. Easily, yes. The whole the whole division is separated by six and a half games, and I think Cincinnati is at at, at par. Cincinnati with would probably those, be uh, second in the NL East right now. Well, I mean, I can say the same thing about the National League East. They're only separated by six and a half if you take Miami out, because Miami knows everyone knows Miami's just tanking, so they don't really count. Everybody uh, else, they're is only the same. ten. They're only they're only they're only ten and a half out. That's correct, and and they just went into uh, – who was it? They went in the American League, and they just ended up sweeping them, whoever they played. I can't remember. It was uh, last weekend. Uh, was that Kansas City? Was it Kansas City? And then before that, it was Colorado, and they took two or three from Colorado, and, yeah, so they're only ten and a half out of it. So you, you guys tell me the National League Central Division, oh, it's only separated by six and a half. Well, so is the National League East. What's the difference? There is no difference. It's the same. The NL Central's they teams got are the better from top same to record. They got the exact same record in the National League East as they do in the National League Central. Almost, almost spot on. The first place team is separated by one point. The Cubs and Atlanta have the same record. Your turnover is ready. 
<laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> the Mets are only a game behind the St. Louis. Pittsburgh and Washington. Washington's only two games below Pittsburgh. So they're basically the same division. So uh, convince me. Talk to me. David, talk to me. What's going on? I've seen all these teams. Convince me otherwise. Well, I, like I said, when we did when we did the end of May, I'm sorry, the end of April, I changed my pick to the Cardinals for the World Series team. Um, I lost my picture for some reason, but I hope you can still hear me. We can hear my you. picture keeps popping in and out. Um, but and uh, and if we get a chance to change again, I'll change again. <laughs> but uh, if I have to stick with the Cardinals, I'll stick with the Cardinals. But. Milwaukee is a home and away juggernaut. They're they're awesome at home and and very also ran on the road. Cubs have some great pitching, but uh, I think they have some bullpen issues. And I still think the Cardinals are a sleeper team that can still hang in there. Reds and Pirates, uh, nothing. They're 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 done. All right, uh, sports time machine. You can try to convince me now, and then I'll give uh, Ron Ronnie a shot. What's his but, name? Uh, there is, I'll, there is, I'll, there is, and there I'll is pull that. out my statistics and show you how you're wrong. But go ahead. There is that. Def- <laughs> there is that definition called competitive balance and awful division. To me, I think the National League Central is a competitive balance where the NL East is. Oh my God! Someone has to win this eventually division. Because I think if you put the Mets, if you put the Mets in the Central, they would not. They would be getting killed right now. Same thing with Washington. Same thing with uh, again. Philadelphia is not a bad team. I like them. I think it's. I think it's going to come down to Philadelphia and Atlanta, depending how many games they play during the end of the year. Uh, but I think it's to me. I think there's more of a competitive balance, and the teams are good, like the Brewers, the the Cubs. Cardinals, there's three really good teams there. Brewers and Pirates, I just don't think it's – I don't I don't think they're – I mean, not Brewers, Pirates and – Pirates and the Reds are not going to make – but Reds are not going to make that July blockbuster move to push them over the top. It's just not their thing to do. So they're probably going to end up falling off, unfortunately. So – but I think there's more of a – those three teams, I think, are better than what's in the National League East, in my opinion. All right, Ronnie? Yeah, I'd, I'd take Milwaukee, Chicago, and St. Louis any day over any of those teams in the East, and I don't think it's even close. You know, the bullpens are better. The pitching, starting pitching's better. There isn't a Christian Yelich equivalent in Atlanta, Philadelphia, New York, or Washington. Uh, I still think the Cardinals win the division. I, I think on, on paper they are the best team in Milwaukee, you know, has been there before. They know what to do, and as much as everybody hates Joe Madden, you know, everybody loved Chris Rock, but every you know, or everybody loved Raymond, and everybody hates Joe Madden. Madden wins, and so I'm mean, looking at the percentages here, the projections. You know, Milwaukee, Chicago, and St. Louis are supposed to play above 550 ball the rest of the way. It's going to come down to the last weekend. It's probably going to be within two or three games, and they're good. They're going to have home field against the East, and they're going to steamroll. All right, so now let's prove you all wrong. So we know there's two things that win in baseball, pitching and hitting. Pitching and hitting are the what wins you games. Let's talk about pitching first. Team ERA. If you go between the National League East and the National League Central Division, all 10 teams who has the highest or best ERA Anybody? Oh, I'm, I'm probably going to say the Nats with Corbin, Strasburg, and Scherzer, but. No, not even close. Not because they have Anibal Sanchez. No. So Cincinnati, fourth best ERA. Cubs are sixth best ERA. Then you go to Philadelphia, 12th best ERA between all of those 10 teams. So Philadelphia, number one uh, between, uh, at least in the American League or the National League East, uh, they are above both St. Louis, which is 14, and Milwaukee, which is 15. So Philadelphia has better pitching than both of those teams. 
The Braves also higher than both St. Louis and Milwaukee. And uh, Chicago is above both of uh, Philadelphia and Atlanta. Uh, but you're telling me that St. Louis and Milwaukee's better, right? All right, now let's go to hitting. It's not like they're. It's not like they're top three. You're, they're only at what? They're twelfth. You said. Wow, boy, that that's that's a vote of confidence right there, right yeah. up there. Right Were we up at the there quarter with... pole or All right, just past so, the quarter pole? So that was that was hitting to show you who was the betting hit or the better pitching team. Let's go to hitting now. All right. So who has the highest between those ten teams? Who has the number or who is the highest ranked of those two of those ten teams? Probably Atlanta or something. No, nope. incorrect again. You guys are not doing your research. I'm going to have to kick you out and bring in Quentin Parks. That would kill me, <laughs> but I would do it. I'll throw By the way, you're talking probably Philadelphia. No, Cincinnati, no. number seven, Cincinnati. Then yeah. Philadelphia, which is 10. You have to go down to Washington, which is 15th, before you then get to St. Louis, which is 16th. The Cubs, which are 18th. And where is Milwaukee? How far down can Milwaukee be? Oh, Milwaukee's 14. Sorry. Milwaukee's 14. Well, you're looking at all so of when you look at the National League. There's not 18 teams in the National League. I'm looking at everything, correct. I'm right. looking at everything. When I'm looking at batting and I'm looking at or yeah. pitching and I'm looking at hitting, mm -hmm. the two things that win, Philadelphia is ranked higher than both St. Louis and Milwaukee. And only Chicago's pitching is better than Philadelphia. And not only that, tell us, tell us. the Braves have better hitting than both St. Louis and Milwaukee. And the um, the uh, the Mets have better hitting than Milwaukee and St. Louis. Mets are 13th, Milwaukee's 14th, and St. Louis is 16th. So your power rankings or whatever, or your you know, everyone everyone has their predictions, right? I mean, that's why we do this show or whatever. But I have statistics to back up why I'm saying what I'm saying. You know, if you have a feeling, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But statistics say Philadelphia is a better team than what you're giving credit for. And I think that's because you see them go out to Los Angeles and lose three straight games. But I think everyone in the world f tends to forget the Dodgers have only lost 19 games, and three of them were at St. Louis when the St. Louis swept them. So besides the three that they lost to St. Louis, they've only lost 16 other games. Let's talk about the National League West. Let's give you guys uh, a second to talk. Uh, Ron, what do you got to say about the National League West division? It's over. <laughs> it's over, and I don't know how you can say that Milwaukee hitting 250 is – Worse than Philadelphia hitting 242 as a team. But that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. Uh, the Dodgers, uh, Cody Bellinger is becoming the best player in that metro area, which is who did you scary. Play? Who, did you, who, who were you comparing Milwaukee to? Or Philadelphia and their 242 batting average is a team Milwaukee's hitting 250. But go ahead. Pretend that Philadelphia is better. Be my guest. Go ahead with your national. All league right. Goal. So on on the on the prediction page here, a worst case scenario for the Dodgers is ninety nine and sixty three. <laughs> <laughs> that they that that which is sixteen games better than anybody else. I mean, yeah. uh, Hanjun Ryu in his first full year in a few years is eight and one with an ERA under two. Cody Bellinger's defense. Best defender is in court, according to War in baseball. Best offense in baseball. Does it translate in October? No, they'll lose in seven to Houston again. But um, boy, uh, you know, right now it's the Dodgers' world, and the rest of are there. I mean, the rest of the division outside of San Francisco is pretty okay. You know, Colorado, Arizona, and San Diego are trying to hold their own, but they're playing for the wild card now. <laughs> what do you think, uh, Mike? I will say that I, I'm not saying it's. I'm saying I'm not saying it's over yet. I think when we first went and did this uh, last month, everyone was saying that it was uh, no one else had a pulse in this division. I think the Rockies now have the pulse. I think with Arenado and uh, Story, 
I think this team is going to start. Uh, they're going to start winning right now. They are playing well above, well above there, and they're and they're playing the and they're playing the uh, the AL East this year and playing them really and they're playing them really tough, which scares me. So I think this team is. I think this team is going to be very competitive going down to the end of the road. Let's see. If the, let's see if the Dodgers continue to win, continue to press the right buttons. The head to heads that come up, we'll see it next month if uh, the Rockies can maybe put some uh, put some uh, pressure on them. I predicted the the Padres back in the early age. I thought they're going to have enough talent. Tatis has been out for a while. Uh, Paddock has been uh, lights out so far for San Diego. Besides the start against the Yankees, and so I think unless they shut him down innings wise, I think he'll be. I think he might be one of their one of the top pitchers right now in baseball. So, you know, you are looking at the top three team, then followed by Arizona, you know, and then San Francisco. So, I think I think I think the Rockies have a pulse. They're not dead yet, and I think they're going to be play, hopefully be able to get that one game wild card and win in Denver, which we will, might be pretty cool. So, all right, uh, David. Well, I mean, I said in April the Dodgers were going to walk away with it and it looks like they're doing it now the Rockies have won eight games in a row and can't make up any ground because the Dodgers have won six in a row so <laughs> and the Rockies to me are like Milwaukee they're a home away home and away uh you know split machine get them at home they're great get them on the road not so much um, San Diego I think is finally coming back to realization that they're just a 500 club and Arizona and San and San Francisco are just waiting to see who they can unload later in the year yeah, but, I mean, I, I, they're going to have potentially MVP and Cy Young on the same team. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I told uh, you know in our baseball pre-brew show before the season started, I said it was Dodgers and everyone else, and nobody believed me then. Now you all believe me. Oh, I, I believe that. I, I think, think some of you agreed with me. Some of you agreed with me as well. I, I was still not think- a San Diego fan or a Colorado fan at the time. <laughs> I'll tell you what, uh, I will still, I'm not counting out Arizona. They've run into a little hard stretch here. Uh, They lost, they got swept by Colorado, which, you know, gave Colorado an eight-game win streak. Uh, But they've been playing some pretty good ball. They played Cincinnati pretty tough. Uh, They went to Cincinnati, and then they went to an American, was it the Yankees they played? Who do they play in the American League, and they swept them? Uh, Orioles, I think it was. No. No, San Fran played the Orioles. Was it the Orioles? Uh, but I, I still think Arizona, I think. Oh, it's like Toronto, I think. Oh, maybe it was Toronto. I'm trying to. Yeah, but there's so many games, it's hard to keep track. Um, I think uh, I think they're going to end up still being second. I still don't believe in Colorado. I don't believe in their, their two of a um, streaky team. You know, they can win eight or ten in a row, but then the next, you know, month they'll lose – six out of 10, you know, uh, every week, it seems like they're losing. So I just, I don't believe in Colorado. I think the Dodgers are going to win this division by 25, maybe more at the end. Easily. And uh, I just don't see anybody challenging them at all. And, you know, the Dodgers get to beat down on these teams, which means they're going to get rested towards the end of the season, which means they're going to be really tough come playoff times because all their pitchers and everyone will be rested and, you know, hopefully not injured. So, um, I'm, I'm right. the one that picked San Diego and thinking that, you know, if it worked, it worked. Uh, but I, I don't think any, I mean, the Dodgers came into the year, guys. Remember, you know, Dave Roberts was on the hot seat. They looked bad in the World Series. They had a lot of questions. What was Kershaw's back? And, you know, instead of kind of folding and, and adding the pressure, they have performed better than anyone thought. You knew they would be good, but I don't think anyone thought they would be this good. Ryu has taken up where Bueller has kind of slacked off a little bit. And so I didn't I mean, think he was going to be that good either. Bellinger is hitting what? I mean, he's got to be hitting like almost 400 or something. Oh, crazy. he's outstanding. And, he you know, is. he's talking about someone winning the Cy Young in Los Angeles, and it's not Kershaw, who's yeah. having, oh, by the way, he's doing just fine too. Yeah. Exactly. Think, to me, the Dodgers, the key to the Dodgers is they got rid of dead weight. They got rid of Matt Kemp and Yasiel Puig which opened up playing spots for Bellinger, Muncie, and Kike Hernandez. And they've taken it, and Jock Peterson as well, letting them play every day against lefties and righties. 
And I think it's going to help them when they get to the World Series because last year, those lefties, Dave Roberts was scared to play them against lefty pitching. And that's what Boston had. They had, they had Price and they had Sale. And it killed them with the lefty pitching. All right. Uh, so here's the question. Now, July, in the July, we know what's going to happen this year. You got to make your deadline at the end of July this year. There's no double. Um, there's no double uh, trade offers at the end of the uh, mm-hmm. July 31st. It's the trade deadline, and there's no. I that was next year. Nope, it's this year. No, I Is think it this, this year? year. Yep. Okay. So July is going to be a busy month for us because we're going to have a lot to talk about because there's going to be a lot of trades and stuff. But if we go into July and we get some chance to talk about this. Which team in, from the National League are you going to say at the end of July, hey, I told you they're going to have a good month and start to make a run? If uh, if you have one that you think might do good and start to you know make a run at it, who would you guess would be that one there, um, David? I would say it's gonna, I would say it's going to be the Cardinals because I think they've got a good farm system. If they need to make a trade to get somebody to, to fill a spot, I think they've got the farm system to do it. The Nationals used to, but they got rid of all their farm systems. Now their farm system is pretty weak. So, I mean, if your best trade chip is Michael Taylor, you're in trouble. So we are looking at uh, the Cardinals are currently. I mean, they're right up there, but I think they can. They're three down. So do you think. But they've got, be... I mean, they've got the farm system. They can make a trade for somebody, impact pitcher, or, you know, a bum gardener or somebody like that could, could help them out. So you think. Um... They'll be up two, up three, somewhere like that. You talk about the end of July? Yeah. I think they'll be right in the mix, probably, you know, within a game or two of the lead. But I think once the trade deadline gets here, they've got the pieces in the minor league system to be able to make the trade for an impact pitcher or an impact bat. And I think from July to August is when they'll take off. Okay. If they if they go that route of making that trade, I mean, it's, it's up to their management to see if they want to go for it. Is there anybody specifically? I'm talking about June now. Anybody in June you think is going to make a run? Oh, June. I thought you said. I thought you were saying up to July. No, I'm saying our preview show at the oh, end. Oh, in this July, month of June, you're talking it's about. It's going to. It's going to be pretty rough. So if if oh, we're okay. talking the end of June, you know, at the yeah. when we get together next time at the end of June, are we going to? Who is going to say, hey, this this team made a run, and I told you they were going to start to put things together. Who would you uh, who would you think that team was? I think it might be Atlanta. Okay, so Atlanta right now is half a game down. Yep. And you think they could uh, very well sign Kimbrel very shortly? Yeah, That's and that could change right everything. Now. Yeah, that would change. I know they're, they're in the mix. So yeah. Uh, Mike, what do you think? Uh, who might be your surprise team in June? And then when we get together at the end of June, you're going to say, hey. I told you they were going to get on a run, and now that they're, you know, instead of 10 games back, they're only two games back. Or, hey, I told you, you know, they're five games back, and now they're five games in first place. So who, which team do you think is going to make a run in, in June? I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a total fan of offense, and like I said before, they have a pulse. Watch, watch the Rockies. I think they're going to put, I think they're going to put some distance between them and their, the first wild card team. And try to get that uh, major home playoff game. Then it would get the Dodgers. Unfortunately, that's a stupid rule in baseball. But we can talk about that in another show. But uh, but, I, but I think the but I think the Rockies are going to put some uh, have a really good month. I think they can go you know twenty and ten. Or so and put some distance between them and the other teams, and hopefully make some late head work against the Dodgers. And then uh, you know already be you know ahead of that. Uh, Head of that, uh, head of, head of that wild card standings as we go into July. All right, Ron. They're they're gonna and, and a horse race will come from the outside. <laughs> Ron, who who would you uh, for June? I'd say Atlanta because okay. they, they um they're gonna land either Kimbrel or Koikel, not both. Um, and that and that solves a lot of Atlanta's problems right there. And I think the team with the money in July is going to be Philadelphia. I think they're the ones that, that, that have the money, and if they're going to be really active, now they got to replace Andrew McCutcheon, which, you know, we hadn't figured until now. Um, Philadelphia figured at one point they were going to be able to sign Machado and Harper, 
And let's face it, Harper's bats not all met that much. So I think Atlanta in the next month, and I think Philadelphia does what they can to secure themselves in July. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I think um, if I was gonna if I was gonna pick someone, I hate to say it because I'm not a big fan, but I think the Cubs are gonna make a push pretty quick. Uh, they, the difference between them in April and May was dramatic. They were not very good in April and they were really good in May. And then, well, besides being swept in St. Louis this last weekend, uh, if they weren't swept, they would have been in first place. They were in first place most of the month. If we all recall that, uh, they just got knocked out of first place when they got swept by St. Louis. So if it wasn't for the sweep, they would still be in first place. I think they're going to make a run some more. I think they're. Uh, you know, with between um, uh, Darvish, who you know have a total resurgence this year. I mean, who would have who would have thought that uh, after you know 2017? I think the Cubs are going to start making a push in the National League. So we'll see come the end of June if our predictions were anywhere close. But uh, right now the Cubs are one game back. I think come the end of June, I think they're going to be a couple games up. I still. Ugh, it hurts me. It pains me, guys. I know it hurts, but I still don't believe in the Cardinals. They just—they're too streaky. They get it. I mean, if you look at their—if uh, you look at their record in in May, they won like six games by scoring ten or more runs, and then they lost—they lost two or—I think they lost like five series in a row. So they lost to Pittsburgh. They lost to—they got swept in Chicago. They lost to Atlanta two out of three. Um, they did not, you know, they did not have a good month. Remember, the end of May, the end of April, they were in first place. End of May, they are now three games back. Uh, I, I think they're a good team. I just don't think, I just don't think, unless they add, I don't think they're going to be there. I think the Cubs are going to make a push. All right, let's talk. Uh, let's talk American League. Some American League action. Wow. Wow. That's all I have to say. Wow. There's one good division. There's two good teams in that division. This is the American League is pretty much why baseball got a D for me because, I mean, there are five good teams and the rest are awful. And they're just not good. We'll talk about it. East, who wants to go first? Let's go with uh, let's go with Mike first for the East. Well, uh, again, I'm uh, again I'm surprised. Best record in baseball since uh, May first has been the has been the Yankees so far in their kitty core. Up next, who you know who's next again after every injury. And if you ask me, after if, after Judge, they would have survived this one. I thought that would have been their absolute most killer of the injuries. I didn't think they would be surviving this, but their uh, their basically their their motto, their their leadership, and everything else has propelled them to being in first place right now. When we were here last time, the Rays were in first by about I think it was two three games. Boston's made some improvements. Uh, the Yankees all of a sudden are steamrolled the Rays, and they beat the Rays again when they came back east. And right now they're you know they're up they're up, they're up by a couple of games. Are they going to win this division? And I'm still not a hundred percent sure. Then again, I'm not really sold on Tampa Bay either. So, so I'm more confident than I was last month. You know, have I have I seen the have I have I seen the last of have I seen the last of the Red Sox this year? They're eight and a half out. I would like I like to see them swept the last series, but let's see what happens. I think it's 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 gonna it's gonna again they have they have the most capita, the most money to. The last thing I was to say, they have the most money to spend. So again, they're gonna go after Keiko, which gives them six pitchers. So we'll see. I guess it'll be either be Paxson or Jermon's innings or. Or Sabathia's five inning starts, what you know, but they'll give him another lefty in Yankee Stadium to pitch around with. So that could oh, yeah. be that could be a killer point. All right, 
Ronnie, what do you got uh, for American uh, League East? The Yankees haven't signed him yet. He shaved his beard off. I you know, pretty much think that that's where he's going to go, but the rumors are that the Braves are in there. Well, you know, the Red Sox spent all that money for a one and seven pitcher. Aren't we? So, you know, who's happiest about that? The man taking the drink right now. He's having... <laughs> He's having the best dreams at night with the Red Sox choking on themselves as possible. And maybe the Yankees fans will give Aaron Boone some credit, finally. I mean, they did win 100 games last year. And with everything that's going on, it would be kind of curious to see, for me, how long Tampa can hang on. Um, I mean, they're, I'm looking at projections right now. They're, Tampa's projected to win 98 games. I'm not sure they can do that. Uh, you know, I think... If Tampa can keep it close, it'll be close. But I could see the Yankees just blowing everyone else right out of the water. Uh, the Red Sox closer by committee was a bad idea. Uh, Toronto's got, you know, Hall of Fame kiddies running around. It's great to see Biggio's kid hitting a home run. And uh, has Baltimore moved to Portland yet? <laughs> Soon. Soon. All right, Dave. American League East. I'm going to kind of go on the – the coattails of Ron there. I think uh, Yankees are looking to pull away. I just don't see the Rays hanging in there, and I definitely don't see Boston hanging in there. I think Boston fights Oakland for the last playoff spot to sneak into the wild card against Tampa Bay. So, But I just don't see I – th I think that Keiko will go to the Yankees. I don't think he would have shaved his beard otherwise. I think he wouldn't have shaved his beard to go to Atlanta. Uh, so I think the Yankees will, will make him a, a nice offer, and he's going to want to pitch in Yankee Stadium as a lefty. And then well the Yankees, Yankees Stadium too. Yeah, and the Yankees are just getting all their healthy guys back. I heard some on the radio say the Yankees are going to step back when they get all their players back because you know they strike out too much or whatever. But I just don't see that happening. I just think that uh, you know they're just going to fill in the pieces and and all the people that have been playing while the guys were injured have experience now. So that's just going to make them even better when it comes to playoff time. And they, and they've and they've got a decent farm system. They got some guys like Clint Frazier and so forth that are good trade chips for if they need to fill a gap in the bullpen or something later. But if we're just talking about June right now, I think the Yankees uh, would, at the end of June, will be up by at least six, seven games. You know, this pains me to say, ID, the Yankees are a fun team to watch. They're having fun again. It's it's kind of like the mid-90s the mid again in New York, as far as the Yankees are concerned. That scares the living. And it's fun listening to John Sterling. Yep. Uh, well, here, here's what here's my thoughts, gentlemen. Mm. You have a team like the Tampa Bay Rays. They have got to be the most unlucky sports franchise in the world. They were stuck in the worst division they could possibly get stuck in because every time they're good, the Yankees or the Red Sox are just a little bit better. And so they never get talked about. Nobody nobody appreciates them. The fans here don't appreciate them. It's I terrible. Guarantee. It's horrible. Terrible. Worst crowd. No money. It, it, it's, you know, they get very little love. And even on the, you know, 11 o'clock news or 6 o'clock news, they'll give like a, a 30 second synopsis of what happened in, in the, in the uh, you know, in the game that day or whatever. And it's a damn shame. I'm telling you right now, it's a damn shame because Tampa Bay is a damn good team. Put Tampa Bay in any other division. Any other division, they're in first place for sure. And they hang with the Yankees, though. Except for the Yankees. The Yankees The Yankees are what the Red Sox were last year. The Yankees are a juggernaut, whether you, they're using their backup players, their starters, who injured, not injured. They get these guys out of nowhere, and they're having career years. And it's a damn shame for Tampa Bay because if you look at uh, – we'll go to statistics now. Number one ERA in the whole league, Tampa Bay, 2.98 ERA. Number one. Who would have guessed that? Not I. I wouldn't have guessed that. Would any of you guess Tampa Bay had the best ERA in the whole league? Mm, not, no. Well, they're winning because of their pitching. It's not because they're hitting. It's because they're pitching. Well, their hitting is not bad either. If we look at average, Tampa Bay is seventh in the league. That's the only, pretty good for them. The only teams that are better are Minnesota, Houston, the Dodgers, Colorado, Boston, and Arizona. 
Then Tampa Bay is seventh with a 260 average. So yeah, what about run scored though? That's that's more important than average is run scored. You can get uh, all single if you want, but that don't matter. It's run scored that matter. Here is run differential. Run differential. Right? That's what we're yep. looking at when we're talking about runs. New York Yankees plus 76. That's Tampa huge Bay, time of the year. The Tampa Bay Rays plus 78, gentlemen. Plus 78. Yeah, two, Minnesota Twins about 140. Two, two better than the Yankees. That's phenomenal. So I, 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 I tried to convince David last month. I asked him what it was going to take. He's still a doubter. Hello. Hello. We have, to get, we, have to get, we have to bless that child. We have to get <laughs> him on board. We have to do something <laughs> to convert him over to the Tampa yeah, Bay. Yeah, came around the pine I'm, tar, so I'm anything's going possible. Down, I'm going down the stadium next week. I'm buying him a jersey. I'm sending him a jersey. June, he's going to be wearing his Tampa Bay Ray jersey, and you'll have a and you'll have change left converted. in that twenty for the tickets. Tampa Bay, I feel I feel sorry for them. They are in the wrong division. Last year, Boston was a juggernaut, and so Tampa Bay got totally. Uh, well, it wouldn't matter what division they're in because if they're in the AL West, Houston's going to dominate them. If they're in the AL Central, Minnesota's going to dominate them. So there's they're. they're their division really is irrelevant at this point. Mm, I, I mean, sure, yes and no, but yeah, they also have yes and no. It's a yes. No, 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 it's not because in the in the division they're in, they got to play Boston nine, and they also times. get to play Baltimore and, they play and Toronto. The Yankees twenty five <laughs> times. If they, they were in the other ball, division, uh, who would they have to play? Like they would only have to play the one team. <laughs> so they have they have a double whammy against them in their division: Boston and the Yankees. Right? Boston's yeah. a five hundred team. Oh, now, well, at the beginning of the season, half the half the preview team picked Boston in the playoffs, except for I, me and David. Oh we were the only God. ones. I didn't. Ron, Ron didn't. No, I knew they were the tank. I think that was that other panel with uh, we won't mention names, but no, I I, 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 probably, I probably picked them in the wild card thing. It was that shenanigans panel that that picked I, that. I, I'm going to have to go back and get some video highlights. It looks like to remind to remind people of what they said. It looks I like I did it's not mine. pick Boston. If uh, the Red Sox fan we, doesn't pick them, then you know that's trouble. No, I picked Boston as one of those five teams that made the playoffs last year that did, wasn't going to make it this year. That was a, one of my alternates. I, I told you Boston has a good year, bad year. Good year, yeah, bad year. Exactly. They had a good year last year. This year, I, they're not a juggernaut. They might be. Mm -hmm. They still might be able to sneak in. I Bob doubt Stanley it. can go in and be closer for them again, right? Yeah. Well, let's. I mean, they might about, be sneak in by default. That's about how they would sneak in is by default. Let's talk oh. about the American League Central Division. I think our hey, good friend. Can I, can, I, can I throw something in there on the East? Sure. Go ahead. All right. As much as you want to praise the, the, the Rays, praise them and everything else, this organization has, as much as the fans don't care about their own team, ownership doesn't care about this team. So when it comes down to this, if they're in, if they're within striking distance of the Yankees, I don't see this team going out and getting Madison Bumgarner to put them over the top and winning this division. They're going to unload more than they're going to unload before they add that piece. You know, they, the, have, the day they have traditionally, they have traditionally gone. If it was a questionable, whether or not they were going to make it, they have definitely done the, okay, let's dump, let's dump. Uh, but I mean, you know, they did end up um, picking up the pitcher over the, over Charlie the winter. Morton. Time. They signed Charlie Morton. Yeah. They started Charlie Morton. Who's having almost a Cy Young uh, season already. So I, I don't – I mean, I agree with what you're saying because of their tendencies to dump in the past. But, I mean, a team that's coming off 92 wins from last season and then they signed Charlie Morton, I don't think they're – I don't think they're in the mode right now to dump again. They're not going to add, that's for sure. I don't know that they need And I'm to. not sure they have to. I think I think they stand put it, put it right where, where, where they're at, and I still think they make the playoffs. All right, let's move on to the uh, – we have a lot to do. 
Uh, let's talk about the American League Central Division, where uh, our good friend Tribe Fan, if he's still around, is probably one to turn us off here in a minute. Wow. <laughs> Eight and a half games in one month. What do you think about that, David? Uh, I think they're going to finish in third. That's what I think about that. Cleveland or Minnesota? On. Excuse me? Cleveland or Minnesota? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Minnesota's already got the Division One. I mean, that's already a, a, a foregone conclusion. And, and, re- and remind us, David, which pronosticators I think me and you Minnesota. said Minnesota were going to win. I said I, I said I again the year I said at the beginning of the year that Corey Kluber was going to be on a different uniform by July. He's going to be started unloading unloading salaries. And the biggest mistake Cleveland made, the biggest mistake they made was not re-signing Mickey Brant. I mean, uh, Brantley, the outfielder Brantley. He went to Houston as just flourishing, and they have no outfield in Cleveland. I mean, they're just awful. They got pitching, but nothing else. All right. Um... Ron, I was wrong. There, Why you happy? You uh, you know, I mean, the Twins have the Twins have won it. It's over. It's absolutely over. There's, you know, combined, there's anyone else in that division that's going to finish with a, you know, maybe Cleveland can squeak out eighty-five to ninety. Maybe, probably not. Uh, Kansas City's looking to sell. Detroit doesn't have anybody to sell, and Chicago is kind of like San Diego. It was either going to happen or it's a two-year project and so so get those playoff tickets ready and i've got my uh gloves over the lips to, to kiss id's tushy tushy <laughs> all right mike what do you got to say well the twins wanted to be wanted to do one thing that's to avoid the yankees and know another wild card game or in the division they did all right now you get the astros goodbye twins so they're they're gonna they'll get in and probably Unless they pull off a miracle of miracles, you know, that we get, they're probably going to get Houston in that in that first round of the playoffs. I did choose them to win that division. I thought they were the the surprise team of of uh, the teams that didn't win the division last year. I thought they were going to be. I thought they had enough pitching. I thought they thought they were going to be good enough hitting. This good? No, I didn't think they're going to be running away with this thing yet. So, but then again, I don't. Uh, to me, it's only June. I everyone's saying it's over and get, print your tickets. So let's let's you know let's not get the horse in in front of the carriage here, guys. Let's you know let's let this let's let this play out. And I know there's no one good in that division, unfortunately, and they're probably going to win this division. Yes, but um, I like I said, I think the Twins were going to make sure they didn't have to play the Yankees again in that first round. I think they have, but then again, like I said, now they get now they're going to look at the Astros. So. But yeah, I think it's an all it's it, it's all twins right now. I, it's gonna be it's all twins right now, and I think they should pull it off, and they'll get the job accomplished. Very well done by a first year uh, manager over there, Rocco. Manager of the year, Rocco. Deserved to lose. Yeah, I didn't think I didn't think Malder deserved to lose his job out there, but uh, well, but yeah, great job by the Twins' new manager. Okay, so what puts um, what puts Houston above? Milwaukee for you if they were to go at it. What well, uh, they were hitting? No, I was uh, talking to Mike because he said he said that they were trying to avoid the Yankees and now they're going to have to play the Astros. So if Minnesota and the Astros face off, what's going to put the I Astros? Have, on? It's one two words. Justin Verlander. He's the he'd be the best pitcher in either two teams. He strives when it comes to playoff baseball. And then yeah, he had Garrett Cole to that too. <laughs> yeah, Garrett Cole to that too. So that they starting two, I think, and especially in a short series, is going to make Minnesota series even shorter. So Minnesota and Houston couldn't play. Houston's going to play the wild card. No, the Yankees would play the wild card because they're going to have the best record. Okay. Ah, uh, all right. Um, I. I I was a Minnesota believer at the beginning yes, of the season, and I still believe in them. And I told you guys that Cleveland by, and I know sports are um, not sports time machine. Uh, Tribe fan uh, argued with me. I said by the uh, All Star break, Cleveland's going to be so far back they're going to start getting rid of their players. And he kind of argued with me about that that they don't do that. 
And I, I still believe that. If you look at what Minnesota has done, uh, and the rest of that division, Minnesota is 109, 109 run differential. Everyone else in that division is negative. The White Sox are down 43, Cleveland's down 16, Detroit's down 98, and Kansas City's down 54. So everyone else is negative in that division. And Minnesota, 109 plus. I, I think this, I think this division's over bar- barring any major. Um, Injuries, and I'm not going to say it yet as I want to see more, but I think Minnesota can hang with either the Twins or the Astros uh, come playoff time. I think they are, uh, if you look at number one offense in the league, who is it? It's not the Dodgers. It's not Houston. It's Minnesota. Number one offense is Minnesota. So they can, and they're pitching is only like six or seven somewhere in there. They're not, I mean, they're not down very far and you got the number one offense and you got decent pitching. I think you can hang with anyone. So uh, speaking of, and they got, they got a guy nobody's ever heard of probably Eddie Rosario. I think is like leading the league in home runs or something. He's, he's way up there and he's like a, like who? <laughs> yeah. They got, is there, uh, is, there, is, there, is there Rosario or is it Polanco to shortstop? I thought it was Rosario. Okay, got a, I they have a Rosario, and they have a. Um, but I think Rosario is the one that's, hit, that's doing all the offensive, you know, uh, juggernaut. Plus, their pitching's not bad either. Like like I just said. Yeah, I think they were uh, when last time I looked, they were like seventh or eighth, somewhere right in that that category. And with the number one offense, I think that's I think good enough. Hang, I think they can hang with anyone. I mean, if you look at run differentials. Um, Houston's number two with 101, and the Yankees are like fifth uh, with 78 at six. So, I mean, run differential isn't the end all or be all, uh, but, um, you know. It's a very good indicator, though. Yeah, 109. 109 is, uh, you know, after they're 50, putting up some After runs. 58 games. So, that's, they're winning by an average of almost two. You know, and the t- other thing. Uh, there was, I think they held the record in April for the most time in, uh, first place record wise. Now they're not, I don't believe they're in first place anymore record wise. Uh, I think the Dodgers overtook them with the 689 and yeah, 680, uh, Minnesota might be back in front now. Minnesota is in 690. And the Dodgers are 689, so Minnesota's back out on top again. So they, mm-hmm. I think they lost it over the weekend, uh, but I think in in a, uh, in May they had the record for the most days in first, uh, you know, with the best record in the league. So, Other thing that might work in the Twins' advantage is that there's not going to be any pressure on them, unlike the Yankees and the Astros, to perform. If the Yankees do win the division, which I think we kind of expect them to do. Um, and of course, the Astros have been the, you know, really the best team in the American League the last three years. Boston, you know, having that great postseason. You know, there's no what pressures are going to be on the Twins. They've already won a gazillion games. Why not Minnesota? You know, the, the Matt Alfred E. Newman of baseball right now. Why not the Twins? Somebody mentioned a stat that I didn't even think about, but it, it was interesting. They said if the Yankees don't win the World Series this year. It will be the only decade in baseball history that they don't win a World Series. No, they didn't win one of the nineteen teams either. It was it was well, go I mean, to going, it was go to the hundred I mean, like, yeah. modern times. Yeah. Modern times. I don't. I'm not counting way back then. But hey, we do they, here in Babe, England. <laughs> since since Babe Ruth came along, I guess. Thanks. Yeah. Let's talk that into about there, the, Let's talk <laughs> about the American League West Division. But I, but I, but I will throw if I could throw in a, again a final say on the Central for a minute. Good. Okay. Um, I'll say this: the Twins. Now, I mean, let me just get a, a. You're mentioning the run differential. Is that because, if I'm right, if I'm if in baseball, is they play everyone 18 times? Twins basically get to beat up their entire division 18 times. So the run differential, of course, is going to be skewed to me. So what's going to what's going to be the Twins' record when they play the teams in the AL East? and the AL West. So when they start getting playing those teams and they start 
Let's see how good they are. They win the Yankee Stadium already this year. Lost two out of three because they are afraid of us. I'll say us because it's, you know. Well, another went to, thing. another went to Tampa and won two out of three. Well, here here here's their schedule for not, for May. Here's their schedule. They played two against the Astros. They won both of them. They played three against the Yankees. They lost two, won one. They played three against uh, the Blue Jays. They won all three of them. They played uh, four against Detroit, and they split two and two. They played three against the Angels. They won two of three. They played three, four against Milwaukee, and they won three of four. They played four against the Angels. One of them was rained out, and they won the other three. Uh, they played the White Sox. They won all three of those games. Then they played Milwaukee. They split, and then they split against Tampa Bay in May. They also beat Tampa Bay in the beginning of June as well. So. 20, 21 and 8 in May, 21 and 9 on the road. They're twenty-one and nine on the road, and they played wow. the Yankees. They played the Yankees. They played the uh, Astros. They played the Tampa Bay Rays, and they played and Milwaukee. Milwaukee was a good team. And they, so they played four powerhouse teams, and they did uh, record-wise. They were one, two, three, four, five. They were five and. One, two, three, four. They were five and four against his teams. And here I'll finish this thought. They've only played the White Sox three times. They've played the Indians three times. They've played Kansas City twice. They've played Detroit. They got a lot of games to feast. A lot of feasting coming up. Yeah, they haven't they haven't played the teams that they should be beating yet. They have sixteen left with Chicago, sixteen left with Cleveland, twelve left, uh, six uh eleven left with Detroit. And 17 left with Kansas City. That's about 14 and three right there against the Royals. And in fact, their run differential with the Royals is only plus two. They 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 have lost two to the Yankees, but they scored 11 runs in those three games. They gave up 13 against. I mean, it's it's insane. They're done with Baltimore, and they're done with the Angels. And they took three out of, as as and they took three out of four in Tampa Bay with a minus run differential. Let's talk about the West. Let's talk about the West. At the end of May, April, everyone was, oh, look at the Astros. They're the best team in the league. Blah 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 blah. Look at the Astros. Look at the Astros. Now we come to the end of, of May. Not a word has been spoken. Very little about the Astros. What happened? What happened? They're forty-one and twenty. Yeah, why aren't we talking about them? Because you haven't talked about the AL West until now. <laughs> yeah. You compared them with uh, very little when we talked about some of the teams and comparisons and everything else. I know uh, Mike talked about them a little bit when they face when Minnesota wants to face them down. Let's hear it. What do you guys give me? Give, wanna, it give it to me. Give it to me. It was going to be the West Division. It was going to be the most interesting division in the yeah, American I was League. Wrong. Here. What happened? I remember, want to keep... remember the um, remember <laughs> the um, <laughs> the uh, Oakland. Oakland okay. was going to be the team this year. Remember everyone? Yeah, that, I I said that, and I was wrong. I was wrong. I'm on the A's bandwagon are. still. I'm on the A's bandwagon still. I'm not. I want. No. I want a case of whatever Justin Verlander drinks at night. Okay. Uh, I uh, yeah, it's over. And I, and I believe they're doing that with Altuve injured. That's scary. Yeah, and Korea. and Korea with, 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 his, well. with, with, with his Bob Kraft injury. <clears throat> and Correa was my um, he was my pick for MVP this year, so he needs to get back on the field. He's not right now. Alex Bregman seems to be the MVP. So yeah, you know, I mean, you know, we'll see them in October for sure. David, what do you got to say about the West? Anything? Well, it's – it's a one horse race and the other four teams are not even going to see the playoffs. So playoffs are going to avoid the West big time. All right, Mike. Um, I guess I will. Hey, we're here. We're, we're here to, we're here. We're here to, uh, we're here to, dis we're here to disagree. So I, the A's just came off a really good month where they made a nice comeback and everything else. Uh, I think they are, I 
I think the second, I think this, you might see a Tampa Bay Oakland uh, wild card game, which probably doesn't sound too exciting for people. So we'll see. I don't know. I mean, I guess if, if, I guess if I'm missing something, who the second wild card is going to be? Because I don't think it's coming from. The, I don't think it's going to come from AL Central, and that would mean Boston's competing for Boston. that spot, and which means it's open. It's going to be Boston or whoever's left. I, so I can see Boston not winning this either. So, so again, like like I said about Colorado, everything else, you know, same thing. I think Oakland has a pulse. They're not going to win the division. I think I, 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 I said the Astros would get to the World Series and beat the Yankees back in April. So, but I think the A's are going to have something to say about this playoffs when it comes toward the end of the year. I think they're a very well well run organization. Uh, better than Tampa Bay. Uh, again, they play in a miserable place. They they sometimes they will sometimes make a needed move if possible. And I just think it's you know I think they might be the the other competing team for wild card. And then again, I'm not saying Tampa. I'm not saying Tampa Bay is the a lock for wild card too. And we're here next month. We may be arguing who the wild cards are going to be against these three juggernaut division winners too. So, yep. Well, speaking of which, you guys haven't even got the wild card game right yet. If the wild card was today, who would be playing in it? The wild uh, card today, probably Boston and Tampa. No, no, it's no. Oakland and Tampa, right? No, you guys have not got it right yet, and I'm very ashamed of you guys. It's it would Tampa. Be, Tampa would be hosting Texas right now. That's Texas has got a better record the Boston right now. And you guys haven't even mentioned him, talked about him. Talk about having a good month. May. Nobody talked about him at the end of uh, a little bit about uh, of them at the end of April. But Texas, they are uh, 30 and 27, three games above 500. And nobody's given them a lick of respect. Now, they just had their one and only good player go down. Gallo, who was having an MVP season. Yeah. I think he got hurt, and so he's on the IR or something. I heard on the radio or something that he was going to be out. Yeah, and, and wait time. until July. That pitching is going to melt in that heat. They're going to they're going to they're going to swoon in that heat. They exactly. always do. Exactly. That absolutely, possibly could be. But I'm very. I mean, when we talk about the American League West, everybody knows Tech or uh, Houston. They're they're yeah. definitely in it to win it, right? We all know yeah. that. But I'm surprised you guys did not jump on the Texas bandwagon. I I'm, thinking, be, I'm like I you. I'm thinking big one. picture. I'm doing big picture. I'm not worried about right now. I'm big picture. And big picture right says now, Texas. If the season ended right now, not, Texas big picture is not right now. Playoffs. That's not right now. Big picture is October. So they're not going to be in in October. No, in no. October, they'll be, they'll be 70 and 92. Texas, Come on. Is Tampa going to be in it in October? Yes. No. No. Tampa's not going to be in it either. Who's going to no. be in it, Damon? I don't. David, who's going to be in it? Oh no, Tampa. Tampa will be as a wild card. They're not going to win the division, but they win as the wild card. Okay, all right. The well, wild card is going to be three gonna AL be, East. Are they going to be in it? No, the wild card could be the three AL East teams. That's the wild card game. The, yeah. the, so whoever you, whoever loses, you know, if the Yankees are going to win it, and the other two are going to be the wild card. Okay. So Yankees, Minnesota, and Houston. Houston. Tampa Bay and Boston. And Boston. Yep. That's You're my wild, that's my five playoff teams. American League has already been decided. Is that what you're telling me? No, cuz Boston's no lock. So, you know, I wouldn't count on Boston or Tampa either one. They both could fade. Okay, so that's kind of why I gave the uh, the grade I did this month is because those five teams seem pretty darn good to be a walk in the playoffs. And they kind of just – they're playing the other 122 games just for something to do. Jockeying for position is what they're doing. They're jockeying for position. So, if uh, – Mike, besides Yankees, Minnesota, Houston, Tampa, and Boston, somebody else going to be in there besides one of those five? You're jumping on the Ranger bandwagon. How we should be impressed? How about the White Sox? They're only a game in back. They're only a game in back of them. We knew if the rookies came out to play, uh, and you know what? Sure, I'm. You know, I'm. I'm on. I'm on the A's. I'm on the A's play on Moneyball bandwagon right now. Where I think a surprise will be 
Tampa Bay, Oakland, probably in the in the wild card. But don't. And I think someone who whoever said here the Indians probably finish third. Yeah, I can probably I can probably believe that. It's White Sox are are the Astros of a couple of years ago. I think they're they're putting together such a strong. Um, a, a, and I said this too during April, I believe too. They have such a strong nucleus, a strong minor leagues that eventually this is going to click for them. They got the, the Elroy Jimenez. Uh, if they can get Michael Kopech back and and pitching well, I think this pitch. I think this staff has. I think this team has a chance to maybe make make some uh, make some damage now. If not, they're working toward the goal next year. So. The White Sox to me are one of the surprises right now, and I think they can keep it up. They're gonna they're gonna contend. No, I think it's gonna be a three horse fight to the end. It's gonna be you know again we're Belmont must be coming. We're talking horses, but you know it's gonna be Yankees, Twins, Astros going neck to neck to finish one, two, three for for uh, win place and show. And then you're gonna have Tampa Bay, Boston, and Oakland. In my opinion, are gonna be fighting for those two wild card spots toward the end and in the AL in the AL Aqueduct. Right. All right. Um, so I'm Ron. Yes. We didn't get Ron's pick Good. yet. <laughs> Go ahead, Ron. Speak up. Tell us what. Uh, tell us how you were wrong. <laughs> tell us how bad you you picked and how you're sorry and I forgot how, how I you should have listened to me more when you had the chance. Go ahead. I, weren't you on the Oakland bandwagon too? I, I, I had Oakland win the division. I had Houston as a wild card. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there you go. Um, and so I'll flip those. Uh, Tampa's hosting the wild card game. Uh, Tam- Tampa's not going to fade that much. They may not beat the Yankees, but they're not. They're hosting the wild card, and it won't be the Red Sox because the Red Sox don't have a closer, and, the, and Chris Sale is one and seven, and you know re- the Red Sox have a lot of issues. Plus, they're coming off a World Series, and and again, I'll agree with ID. You know, hot, hot, cold, hot, cold. I mean, yeah, you can make a case for Chicago. You can make a case for Cleveland. You can make a case for Texas. Um, uh, but I, I think Oakland has the best case. Um, but, but I think anyone who thinks that Tampa, I, it's kind of silly to think that Tampa's going to be fighting for a wild card. They're, they're, they are the fourth best team in the American League. When I don't think they need to add anybody to do that. I think they're just going to do what they do, and you know, six thousand people a night will watch. And but Tampa, Tampa's going to host that wild card game. Who they're going to? I would say Oakland. I, I, I'm just not real confident on Boston. Get your yeah, tickets and, now. I, I mean, and Tampa Bay is the only team Oakland would outdraw is Tampa Bay. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> and if it was Oakland here, there would be about 10,000 people in the stands. <laughs> well, I think, that, I just, I just, I'm just, waiting for that rating, you know. I just um, – I think, you know, the fact that Texas was there was a surprise to me as well. You know, we're two months in now, and we hardly ever talk about Texas. So I always try to give the, the little man that's – that you know, the little engine that could, I'm trying to give him his props because next month they might be at the bottom of the heap for all we know. But as long as they're there now, I'm going to give them, I'm going to give them the respect that they deserve right now. So I'm saying Tampa Bay and Texas in the wild card game. Well, you've got to believe, man. you got to believe – you don't believe in Tampa Bay. You don't believe in Texas. What are you guys going to believe in? What are you going to believe in? I tell you. Actually, actually, Oakland is ninth in attendance. They're not as bad as people say they are when it comes to not, you know, not going to that big, awful place. Hmm. All right. Uh, so uh, let's see what we got. We got a lot of idiots that have joined us tonight, and I appreciate Al, Red Sox fan, and all of our moderators in the chat that have been uh, looking out for us, so I do appreciate that. Uh, be Zombie sure to hunter. just remove them and kick them out, Al, and whoever else is out there uh, as a moderator. If you could just uh, jump on board and start kicking. Looks like we've got some uh, inappropriate activities going on there so big shout out to all my moderators out there al red sox fan thank you very much and uh, anyone else that was out there helping as well so appreciate that all right so i had uh washington and i had uh the astros in the world series and i think i had the nationals winning it 
Uh, if I, how confident am I that that's going to happen now? If I could have a redo again, I would like a redo because I see some other powerhouse teams coming. But you don't get we don't get the redos at redos. You don't get to turn in your lottery ticket and then go, oh yeah, well now that I know what half the numbers are, I want to redo. No, no, no. How's your World Series matchup coming there, uh, Ron? Uh, Houston and St. Louis, still plausible. Yeah. How, 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 uh, you know, on a scale of one to 10, you know, how, um, six, you know, how, six. I, I think Los Angeles is the, clearly the class of the national league, but I'm, I'm, I'm not as pessimistic on the Cardinals like you are. And, you know, I've seen the Dodgers track record in, in, in October, but you know, I, I, it, I wouldn't want to turn in the ticket if even if it gave me the chance, but you know, I'm not, I'm not feeling too optimistic, but I'm not. I'm, I've, I know I think I've half it right. All right, and if you could trade out half, which would you trade out? It would be St. Louis. I really do think Los Angeles is that good, but um, anything ha can happen in October, and as long as you can get in, you got a shot. And I'm not sold on St. Louis not making the playoffs. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't think St. Louis is a bad team. I just, I don't, uh, I mean, for them to make a World Series run, it's going to have to be like 2011. They're going to have to go all the way through the wild card on the road and do, you know, have that magic run again. Um, so, uh, so going into the season, you had St. Louis. You thought they were going to do better than, obviously, the Dodgers. What has changed your mind? Is it the Dodger hitting, the Dodger pitching, or the St. I think Louis? The way that the Dod oh, I think it's the Dodgers. I think the way that the they responded to start the season, the fact that Bellinger and R Ryu have just gone lights out. I mean, Cody, Cody does this two or three years in a row. You can make the case who's better is the best player in Southern California, Mike Trout or Bellinger. Um, and Los Angeles needed to have one of those stand and deliver responses this year. And that's exactly what they've done. Yeah. Um, they've done the opposite of what the Red Sox did out of the gate and hats off to Los Angeles. I mean, St. Louis is in a tough division. Um, Los Angeles is, is playing patty cake. <laughs> Damon, your world series matchup. What was that? Originally or the first redo? <laughs> Originally. Originally, it was the Yankees and Cardinals, and then I switched it and redo to the Astros and the Cardinals, just like Ron. Okay. But, but so, like Ron, I, I believe it's going to be a 2017 repeat with the Astros and Dodgers. Okay. And, if uh, I could change. If I could change. Uh, what, what, um, what is giving you that uh, impression? Is it uh, the – Cardinals are not doing as good as you thought they were. The Dodgers, or are, that Dodgers are doing that much better than you thought. The Dodgers they were are doing. that much. They're that they're that much better. And if Kershaw ever comes back healthy, you know, look out. And uh, but I think just like in seventeen, I think uh, AJ Hinch will outmanage Dave Roberts in the World Series, and the Astros will take it. Not that you asked me that, but just <laughs> now you switched. Yeah, for free. Uh, <laughs> Did you switch to the Cardinals because they were in first place in the National League at the end of April, and you thought, wow, what a powerhouse team? No, I had the Cardinals originally. I had the Yankees and Cardinals, but I switched to Houston. That was my switch. Oh, there's, oh okay. Your switch was to, was to, to Houston because they were playing so well. I was like, man, this pitching is just too much. And, and, you, and, and you switched away from the Yankees. Now, yeah. now, now, now. And, uh, I still, and I'm still switching away from the Yankees. They're going to really? win the division, but not. But they're not. Nobody's going to beat Houston. Nobody's going to beat Houston. Not Minnesota. Not anybody. All right. And Mike, how is your soup um, World Series uh, matchup looking? I think I chose the Astros and and Cardinals also because I was all in on the Goldschmidt deal. I thought that was the the National League. I didn't think the, I didn't think the National League was that all of a good good division. And I wasn't high on the Dodgers. I thought they had some injuries, they had some issues. Bueller wasn't coming in, in wasn't coming in healthy. Kershaw's back wasn't coming in healthy. Spring training. I said, well, I'm not sold on the Dodgers right now. I chose the, uh, I chose. I thought the Cardinals had the had the better team pitching wise. Um, offensively, I thought they'd be better. So I chose them. So I'm I'm pretty happy where they're at right now. 
Uh, but we'll see what happens when it comes to, you know, if the Cardinals play the Dodgers in the playoffs and which Dodger team shows up. If Bueller, Kershaw, and Ryu are as advertised, then then I, the Cardinals young pitching is not gonna is not gonna be able to play. And it's it's gonna be and what it's gonna be to me, matchup, matchup, matchups. Who's gonna be who's gonna get whose matchups first? The Dodgers are gonna get who? Then the Cardinals are gonna would have to fight off with the uh, you know, you know, with uh, with one of the other winners too. So, so hopefully, hopefully my hopefully my pick will be right, and I'm not going to stray away from the Cardinals now. I think they can still get there, and they're still in they're still in a uh, they're still within uh, a fighter's chance. You know. All right, and, and um, I, and I think there's one team that the Dodgers don't want to see in the playoffs, and that's the Cubs, because the Dodgers have trouble with left-handed pitching. The Cubs got three left-handed starters they can run out there. And so I think on a matchup like Mike was saying, that I believe it's a bad matchup for the Dodgers. I'm not sure they can survive that, but I don't think the Cubs are going to make it. So hopefully the Dodgers will not have to worry about that. Okay, I think uh, I think the Cubs are going to be my June, you know, my June comeback team, and they're going to make a little bit of a push. I'm hoping that they fall apart after that, of course, but. Um, if uh, if I get, you know if you have uh, we're gonna wrap up here just shortly. Uh, if there's anything else you want to talk about, bring up, discuss, mention thoughts, uh, you know about where Keiko's gonna go or anything like that. Uh, now's your you know your parting gift to all of us, so we can <laughs> review your what your parting gift is to us at the end of June and we can see uh, how good a parting gift you gave us. So any other words of wisdom, thoughts, uh, don't well, talk about, I'll... Hey, I saw, you know, this player is having a great season. We haven't mentioned it. Thought I would, you know, mention it or anything. I, I don't know if this is words of wisdom or not, but I do think that both Dave Martinez and Mike Rizzo are both on the hot seat for the nationals. And if Rizzo doesn't make some trades to upgrade that bullpen the way he did last year, He's on the outs, too, because his contract is up as well. I still think they should make a trade with the Giants and get those two left-handed relievers. They've got Will Smith and Tony Watson. That would be a great asset to the Nationals' bullpen. The only thing is I don't know what the Nationals have the Giants want. That's the only problem. They, they don't have a whole lot of chips to trade, so he's got to spend some sort of magic with that. All Corko, right. to the, Corko to the Yankees, Kimbrel to the Braves. I think that's how it's going to break out because you don't shave the beard if you're going to Atlanta. Yeah. And uh, I would love to see the Twins go and spend some money in the trade season to, to bolster some things or at least get a vet. Hey, Ron, do you think uh, Mickey Calloway lasts by the time we have our next chat? Uh, probably because who they're going to hire. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think that Callaway and uh, Martinez should be gone, but um, they probably won't. And I mean, no one gets in their own way quite like the Washington Nationals. Uh, but uh, well, I will I say mean, this. If the Nationals don't fire Dave Martinez, they will never make the playoffs. The only way they make the playoffs is they fire Dave Martinez. I fully agree with that. I fully agree with that. Um, and – Let's not be giving Alex Cora so much crap. He's not the one that's made some bad decisions. Dave Dombrowski might have gotten a World Series, but his bullpen construction is right up there with. Oh, they, um, but but Nathan Evaldi is so great. <sighs> Enjoy Mike, him for five years. What do you got for our parting gift? What 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 gift are you giving us this month? Mike, words of wisdom. Uh, well, when we get together in July, I'm going to give you my parting gift for June and July. They were talking about on the radio today about potential big name signings. I agree totally with Ron. Where the where where the bearded warrior Keiko's going, and Kimbrel probably going to go back home for one last one last dance with McCann and the Braves, and trying to bring back America's team. You know, you might see the Braves, you know, make their make their run there. But just saying, you're going to hear, hear me say this now. The biggest pitcher coming out of the going to a major team will not be Baumgartner. And I know he has years left on his contract, but there was talk about today about Scherzer possibly getting out before the end of the year, too. 
And some tells me a team may offer it if there's enough ammo and bullets out there to get them. Oh, see, that contract has a lot of money on it. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, I mean, if Washington was smart and if they, you know, fall 10, 15 games behind, I could see it. But, man, that would – I just don't I, see I, them I, doing that because they're going to rebuild over those three starting pitchers. That's their core of their team. I, I, yeah, I, they are, uh, you know – Serge is not hate, going anywhere. I, my my part of y'all is I hate to say this, but y'all are bashing on my nationals, and yeah, they're my nationals now because I chose them in my World Series team. I think <laughs> the nationals are going to have another good month. I think they're going to be in it after June, and they're going to just keep going, just keep plugging along. And I still think there's a chance they're going to end up taking this division. Uh, there's a chance. I don't think they're going to be 10, 12, 15 out like you guys think. But I you were in for the Phillies. I am out on the Phillies. Oh. I am. They're going to merge. So Harper's going back to Washington, and Scherzer's Harper going for to Scherzer Philadelphia. trade. Trade. Hey, right? I'm, just, I'm just. Hey, all I'm saying is, we're going to talk at the end of June, and I'm telling you, I don't think they're going to be 12, 15 games out like you all, and they're going to be firing their manager. I no, they're not going to be 12, 15 games out because mm-hmm. their rest, the whole division is going to be 500. Right. I, I, you know, I think that they're, they're not, I said they could possibly be that. I don't think they will be, but you know, they're set, what, six and a half back now? Uh, 10, between six and 10 out. They'll be in third place by the end of June. They'll be, they'll be ahead of the Mets. You, oh, you think the Mets are going to drop too? Yeah. yeah Cal- drop. They will, Callaway will be the first manager fired. Exactly. Oh, I can't wait for our meeting in June, guys. I just cannot wait. But I think at the end of June, Atlanta will be in first place ahead of the Phillies. I well, I that. mean, they're almost in first place now, but I still yeah, but think, I think they'll be I still ahead think of them. Phillies are gonna are gonna make a splash. I think Washington is gonna stay tough. I hate to say it, I think the Phillies are gonna. I still think they're gonna be there at the end, and when they Harper are, might have a hundred. Harper might have a hundred strikeouts by the end of June. <laughs> Well, they could, they very well could be, buddy. You also have 18 home runs in June, too. Wow. All right. Well, that's going to be our end of May baseball review show. I want to thank our special games, our special guests, Sports Time Machine, Retro Sports Network, and of course, Baseball Demos. Be sure to check out their wonderful channels. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the little bell notification. And so that way, every time they post a video or go live, you will also get a notification. And I want to thank all of our moderators and everyone that came out tonight to join us for our wonderful end of May baseball preview show. A lot to talk about, I'm sure, in the end of June. We'll get to redo this all over once again. So look forward to it. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming out tonight and spending some time sharing your words of wisdom. It was fun. All right, guys in the chat, I appreciate Al, Larry Harris, Dave Gardner, of course. How you doing, Dave? Thanks for coming by. Appreciate it, my friend. Uh, let's see. We had uh, Larry Harris here. Um, bu- 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 Milwaukee bu- Brewers logo, Dave, is my answer. The M and the B that interlocked in the glove. Uh, Tri-Fan 879. Uh, what was the question? Best logo? Best logo. Um, I like the Expos, actually. Uh, that's what Al said in the chat. That was a pretty good one, too. But I, ca- I can't see the chat, unfortunately, on my phone. But but I like the Expos, yeah. That's okay. Hey, I got to call the Jigsaw Puzzle. He oh, said the Curly bit. W is, pr- is pretty good, too. So I do like the Curly W. I own quite a few of those jerseys. Yeah. Hmm. All right, everyone. We'll see you at the end of June for our next preview show. Thanks, everyone, for coming out tonight. And thanks to my guests for sharing their words of wisdom with me. We'll see everyone next month. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. We'll see you all very, very soon.